Resident Evil is chock full of amazing and memorable characters. Some of them become mainstays in the series once they're introduced, like Chris and Claire Redfield, Jill Valentine, Leon Kennedy, etc. But sometimes we meet new characters and fall in love only for them to simply disappear into the ether, like Thanos snapped his fingers so hard Capcom got added to the MCU. So we need to hear from the following three characters now. Spoilers ahead for Resident Evil 0, 3, and 5. First up, we have Sheva Alomar from Resident Evil 5, actually my first experience playing the franchise. She is a brilliant and capable agent out of the West African branch of the Bioterrorism Security Assessment Alliance, or BSAA. She grew up in a town almost entirely supported by jobs from Umbrella Plant 57. She was orphaned when her parents were killed during a T-virus outbreak at the plant. And through a tumultuous time during her teens, she ultimately fell in with guerrilla fighters, where she learned of Umbrella's involvement in the death of her parents. During this time with the guerrilla fighters, she attracted the eye of spies in the area, one of which, an American, adopted her and gave her an opportunity at an education, after which she joins the BSAA and serves under Captain Josh Stone. By the way, another character we need to see more of, perhaps maybe a co-op experience? I'd really be down for that one. We first meet Sheva when she's assisting Chris Redfield in the Kajuju Autonomous Zone, where she and Chris ultimately go head to head with Albert Wesker. Time after time, she is thrown into wilder and wilder situations and is always ready to push through to stop the Uroboros from being foisted upon the world, even going so far as being willing to sacrifice herself if it means destroying Wesker and his plans in the process. The only thing we've heard from her since is years after the events of Resident Evil 5, Sheva, still with BSAA's West African branch, emails Pierce Nivens to voice her concerns over Chris's disappearance and offer her support. Beyond that, we haven't heard from her. We have every reason to believe she is actively working to thwart efforts to release bioweapons upon the world from her West African branch of the BSAA. Still, it would be really awesome to be able to play as or with her again. Next up, we have Carlos Oliveira, who first appeared in Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, and outside of some content in Dead by Daylight, where we can also find Sheva, by the way, he hasn't appeared in any new Resident Evil games. Thank goodness we got to see him again in the remake of Resident Evil 3. Much like Sheva, Carlos's childhood was marked by trauma. He grew up somewhere in South America and ended up being trained with guerrilla tactics until he was captured. Umbrella took an interest in him and negotiated his release upon the contingency that he become a mercenary for their Umbrella Biohazard Countermeasure Service, or UBCS. He's a charming and wisecracking corporal who has a range of skills, from heavy weapons to flying helicopters and other small aircraft. The UBCS was dispatched to help deal with the Raccoon City outbreak, and during that event, he watched as basically everyone on his team was wiped out, one after another. Yet he never wavered in trying to save as many people as possible. Ultimately, he and Jill Valentine were the only two to escape of their original group. After the destruction of Raccoon City, Carlos left the US by way of Mexico and returned to South America. According to a translated tweet from Yasuswa Karamura, who helped with writing the Resident Evil Nemesis script, he may have even gotten plastic surgery 
to avoid being recognized by any Umbrella forces looking for him. He really did go on to leave us in a cold, cruel, Carlosless world. And finally, we have Billy Cohen from Resident Evil Zero, the most epic slow-mo bullet time diving second lieutenant who ever escaped custody. He may be fairly quiet during the tenuous cooperative arrangement he had with Rebecca Chambers, who, by the way, we need to see more of. But as the campaign goes on, we get to know him. While serving in the Marines, his squad was sent to stop guerrilla fighters who were attacking civilians in a civil war in Africa. His squad fared poorly and lost all but four of their men by the time they got to their coordinates. They found they were at a peaceful village, not a guerrilla base. The squad leader decided to kill everyone in the village, and Billy opposed the murder of the entire innocent African village. This resulted in him paying the ultimate price for it. His own squad blamed him for the massacre, and he was sentenced to death. By the end of the game, Rebecca chooses to help Billy fake his own death to allow him to escape his death sentence. Any case files regarding Billy Cohen would have been lost during the Raccoon City outbreak and destruction. And while we don't know where he ended up after the events of Resident Evil Zero, it's pretty likely that he would have headed to maybe Stoneville or another nearby town to avoid detection by the Raccoon City PD before escaping the area entirely. Many folks feel he could have escaped the country and moved to Mexico, Canada, or even South America. I love the idea of picturing him at a South American bar with Carlos while they bond over escaping Umbrella's Reach. While I certainly hope that's what happened, there is a file that you can find in the Resident Evil 2 for Nintendo 64 and in Resident Evil 3 Nemesis called Mercenary's Diary that details someone who was a good soldier but whose execution was ordered despite that. This unnamed soldier was helped out by the company and recruited by Umbrella to join the UBCS. The timing is eerily similar to Billy's timeline. And if you consider the fact that Umbrella routinely recruited war criminals and exiled soldiers, according to the Resident Evil 3 Nemesis game manual, and it makes a lot of sense why Billy might have ended up working for UBCS. He would have had the opportunity to make a living saving people from Umbrella's monsters. That would then mean that it's likely his body that we pulled the note off of. Feels pretty bleak. There are a few holes in this theory though. When we last saw Billy, he had escaped custody. So unless he was recaptured, then the line of text from that file but on the morning of my execution, a miracle happened. The company helped me out, giving me a second lease on life. That line doesn't really make sense. He was already free and presumed dead. It's unlikely that they would have found him and be ready to carry out his death sentence that quickly. So, who have I missed? What are your favorite characters that we just haven't gotten a follow-up title with? Let me know in the comments, and maybe I'll need to do another video to include them. All my sources used for this video are included in the description below. And help me defeat the algorithm by liking and subscribing if you think I've earned it. Until next time, I'll holler at y'all later.